Now, what's that peculiar floating object? That's a bomb vessel for siege work. Commodore Preble borrowed two of them from the King of the Two Sicilies. He was going to close in and bombard Tripoli. Preble sailed into the harbor of Tripoli with a squadron of schooners and brigs. The Enterprise, Nautilus, Argus, Siren, Scourge, Vixen, in addition to six gunboats mounting one gun each, two bomb vessels, and the flagship, Constitution. With him were over 1,000 officers and men. They were attacking a walled city, defended by an army of 25,000, by forts and batteries mounting 115 guns, and a Tripolitan naval force of a brig, two schooners, two large galleys, and 19 gunboats. The first attack began on August 3, 1804. Preble took his entire fleet within point-blank range of the shore batteries. Captain Summers commanded the first gunboat division. Captain Stephen Decatur, the second. Enemy ships and shore batteries opened up at grape shot distance. Captain Decatur advanced toward the enemy's eastern division of nine gunboats. The enemy closed. Captain Summers, even with his sweeps out, couldn't fetch windward to join Decatur. In gunboat number one, he bore down on five of the enemy's western division, engaged within pistol shot, and drove them among the rocks. Captain Decatur, in number four gunboat, carried one enemy gunboat and then took a second. Was saved by Reuben James. Lieutenant Tripp in gunboat number six boarded an enemy, was cut off. He cleared the deck and hauled down the enemy color. The brother of Stephen Decatur, Lieutenant James Decatur, was the only officer killed. Preble broke off the action but returned four days later. The bomb vessels threw shells into the town. From their prison ashore, Bainbridge, former captain of the Philadelphia and his officers, watched the battle. Their men had been forced to carry ammunition for the enemy. The Pasha of Tripoli gave no sign of yielding his city or asking for peace. Another idea, a fire ship loaded with explosives to destroy the harbor shipping and shatter the Pasha's castle. The same intrepid that had burned the Philadelphia. In her hold, 100 barrels of powder, 150 shells. Slow burning fuses led to the powder magazine. The intrepid, Captain Summers, was manned by a volunteer crew of 13. Mm. Thirteen. Preble waited. And the Argus, Nautilus, and Vixen stood by to take off the crew of the fire ship. Would the intrepid repeat her great deed? Would her luck hold? The enemy was rested. didn't hold. Subsequently, Preble was ordered home, and the Pasha was now faced by Commodore Barron. The new Commodore brought out William Eaton, Navy agent for the Barbary States, who had a plan. The brother of the Pasha of Tripoli was Hamet Karamanli. He had claimed the throne of Tripoli, had been defeated, and driven into Egypt. It was Eaton's idea to put Hamet back on the throne of Tripoli. A native army of 400 men was gathered in Egypt. Frequent disorders and desertions among them reduced this number. From the fleet came seven United States Marines. They were under Lieutenant O'Bannon. 
And this army started out with 107 camels. From Egypt, nearly 600 miles across the Libyan desert, to Derna. It was an extraordinary march, one of the most difficult in military history. With the Marine Corps, it was the start of a great tradition, a march from Egypt to the shores of Tripoli. Supplies were received from the Argus and Hornet. Reaching Derna, the attack was coordinated with the guns of the Argus, Hornet, and Nautilus, guns on which the hope of victory rested. peace in the Mediterranean, and at home for a while. Well, did the war teach us anything? Yes, commerce needs naval protection. The United States, refusing to tolerate piracy, had humbled the proud rulers of Barbary and gained prestige in the eyes of the world. The young Navy had beaten the pirates at their favorite hand-to-hand -hand tactics, adding to the growth of a fighting tradition. The war produced great leaders, Preble, Decatur, Tripp, and Summers. Bainbridge, who will emerge from captivity to win victories. Other names that will be heard again. Hull, Rogers, Porter, McDonough, Perry, Lawrence. America made it known at home and abroad that to keep a peace and to keep honor there must be ships that can fight and men who can lead.